This morning, I want to talk in the next 30 minutes about this uh, topic. Do not eliminate them all at once. Do not eliminate those. Do not eliminate them all at once. It's it's a uh, it's strange. However, if you read from the uh, Deuteronomy seven one. Uh, hold on, let me take. I'm sorry, I need to take. Some. If we read from Deuteronomy 7, 1, When the Lord your God brings you into the land when you are entering to possess and drives out before you many nations, and uh, we want to list all the nations that the Lord allows us to face before we enter the promised land. Number one is the Hittites, the Girgahites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Parasites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. How many? How many? Seven. There are seven. So those are the enemy, the enemies that we have to drive out before we can grab the promised land. So think about this. This verse from Deuteronomy 7 1 is actually applicable to us in in the modern in the modern uh, generation right now. Because whatever we face here, whatever Israel face on this verse, Deuteronomy 7, 1, actually we are facing right now. So we have, we have, to, we have to allow God to help us. And God already warned us. Seven nations, and they are larger, they are stronger. They are larger and they're stronger than us seems to be. So if, you've, if you see the Hittites, the Gergahites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Parasites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, those are stronger. And the Lord, him, the Lord himself also admitted that they look like stronger. But the Lord is, is giving the power. The Lord will give you the power to overcome all these seven strongholds, seven mountains, seven nations. So first, what, what we learn from this verse is there are a, a lot of enemies. Number one is there is a lot of enemies to conquer. Yeah? Do you agree? Seven? Are they, are they, are they uh, many or not? There are many, right? There are so many. So, so we, we agree that a lot of enemies to conquer. The number, the number two is you have to conquer before you can possess the promised land. Yeah? So you have to, this is a conditional, so you have to pass this before you can see the promised land. The number three is they appear to be stronger and more, more powerful than you. They are more stronger, they are stronger, they are more powerful. So the one, one of the lessons that we learn from here is, first, don't take light of those enemies. Don't take light of those enemies. Don't take light of those enemies. They are shrewd and they are strong. They are cunning and they are smart. We often fall to the enemies we look, we look down or we took light off. So if you see, oh, these enemies, I can, I can overcome it easily. That one maybe is difficult, but this one is easy. So, there are seven nations. So, this is, this is one, one thing that we learn from, from this, uh, from this uh, verse is, we have seven nations, we have seven, seven, uh, uh, enemies that we have to take care, you have to conquer, but we should not take light. Number one, we, 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 have, uh, we have this uh, notion as we often fall to the enemy we take light of. Is that right? 
Okay, for, for instance, I don't, know, I don't know what is your enemies. I don't know your strongholds. Different people have their own, they, you have to face different strongholds. If, for instance, uh, you, you face uh, some addictions, young people, even the, the old people, the elderly, the adults, we face, we face some addictions probably. And, and you think, oh, this is, this enemy is, is uh, I can take care of it easily. I don't have to struggle, I don't have to fight, it's come naturally. So um, we take light of it. And said, and uh, one day uh, I talked to my friend that, um, and he's a, like a very strong and bad smoker. And he can smoke very, how many, I don't know how many packs a day. And then, and then he said that, oh, this is not an addiction. I can take care of it. I can control how I want, when I want, and I can control if I don't want it. So, so it's like, it's like uh, taking light of the enemies. So this is very easy. I don't have to fight. I can control. Then I said, why you don't control? Oh, this is, I can take control. I, I, can, I can do it. I can, I can uh, control myself. If I want to smoke, I smoke. If I don't want, I can uh, stop. I can quit. If I, if I, want to, I want to light up, I light up. If not, then I can control myself. Why don't you control? So that's the question. So actually, the enemies controls you, right? So in this case, the enemies, the stronghold, the nations that you have to face is controlling you. And if somebody controlling you, you are a slave. Is that right? Is that right? You are a slave. So you are a slave of this addiction because you think that, oh, this is something that's very easy, very easy to conquer, very easy, very light. I can conquer it easily. But then you become slaves because actually you cannot control. And then and, um, if, if, uh, if, find, if later on we find out that you cannot control, is that, oh, I cannot help it. So many people, they said, I cannot help it. I cannot help it. So it's like, uh, I cannot help myself. I just, I just throw into that, that habit. And that is not only, that is your, your stronghold, your, your enemies that you have to conquer. And that is different, different. It differs from person to person. So I can have that, you, you don't have to have that. Or sometimes you have that and I don't. So it, it can be a different addiction, maybe porn, maybe different thing. And you say, oh, I can, I can just stop clicking that. But why? Why not? I, I can watch that, that movie that's probably inappropriate, but then why, why you cannot control yourself? Then you become a slave. So here, here we talk about the, the seven nations. That is one, one thing that we learn here is don't take light of it. Don't take light. Oh, this is easy, easy to conquer. No. On the other hand, don't be afraid and shudder to confront them. With the Lord, you can face it. When, when, when you are afraid of your enemy, you see yourself as a grasshopper. We read that from uh, in Numbers 13:33. We saw the Nephilim. There, the descendants of Enoch come from the Nephilim. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. So actually, so we are on the, the other extreme, yeah? The, the, the first extreme is take light. The, the second is we are shuddering, we are, we are afraid, we are, and we see them like giants, and we are like grasshopper that will be crushed easily by the giant. So we should not do this, the, the two extremes, we just face with the Lord, we can conquer that. Remember, actually, uh, we don't have to fight with the, with the Nephilim, with the Anna. 
and then we don't have to see ourselves like a grasshopper. Actually, before originally, we should have dominion. Remember, Adam has dominion over fish, over the, the uh, fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over all the creeping things that creep upon the earth in Genesis. Sin robbed that from Adam. Sin robbed that power from Adam. So, don't look down and don't take light of it, but also don't, uh, don't be afraid and shuddering. So, <clears throat> when you see all these uh, seven nations, oh, that is only the Hittites, the Gilgahites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Parasites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, I don't think they can defeat me. It's not an addiction because I take full control. I can stop whenever I want. I can stop whenever I don't want. That's what people hooked by a bad habit addiction. But you will be surprised that with that attitude, you slowly become a slave to that habit. Is that right? You are no longer in control. That habit controls you. It, if it controls you, aren't you a slave, are you? The seven strongholds to conquer. The number one. Let's, let's analyze that. Number one. I don't know what is your number one, but number one in general is, num number one is envy. The envy. Envy of wealth. Somebody's wealth, somebody's possession, somebody's wife, somebody's husband. We see that there. Yeah? This is envy, right? You are envying, you are envying somebody's possession. That's why they, they rob. That's why the, the, a lot of people, they, they just rob because they, they envy. They, they, want, they want a possession that, that's not their, their rights. They want to rob also from uh, their friend's wife, their friend's husband. So the envy, that is the stronghold number one. We have to conquer that. We have to conquer that before you can enter the promised land. Is that right? So if you cannot conquer that, then I'm sorry, you cannot go into the promised land. You have to conquer that. That's, that's the, that's, uh, uh, God already said that. Envy of what? Envy of money? Money, someone's possession. The love of money is the root of all evil. But Simon knows that verse very well. It's not, it's not the money is the root of all evil, but the love of money is the root of all evil. First Timothy 6.10 for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted, after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through many sorrows. You know, if you read uh, people who, who just won a lottery from the history, oh, they are very, oh, I, I know they have the whole world. I can buy anything. I can buy mansion. I can buy girls. I can buy anything. Uh, I'm so powerful. If, if you read about that, we know about the uh, King Solomon, probably, yeah. Uh, because the Lord God himself told him that kings should, have, should not have many wives. Kings should not have many uh, golds, yeah. And um, Solomon reached that all. Every, and he has so many wives and so, so many concubines. So, so this, the love of money is the root of all evil. And when you, when you win a lottery, later on, probably a couple of months, a couple of years, their life is miserable. They got divorced, or got divorced, or maybe they got robbed, they were killed, or if not, they, he will kill. There are so many sorrows. That is according to the word of God. Which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. They erred from the faith. They deviated from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So, because the crooked, the crooked people, they also covered, covered your, your money. So if you win a lottery and you publish it in YouTube or in the news, I win $1 million. 
10 million dollars, 300 million dollars. And then the next day, people know where you live and you'll be robbed, you'll be, you'll be gunned down. So many lottery winners, life becomes miserable, just divorce, kill, or to be killed because the crooked coveting your money. Stronghold number two. Stronghold number two is pride. Is pride. We we want we want uh, we don't want to honor God, but we we want to boast our own ability. We pride. That's why you know the uh, the devil, the evil one, um, the Lucifer. He he was down. He was uh, he fell in sin because of pride. And when you have pride, and it goes together with rebellion, you know better than God. God said this. We say, oh, this is better. We probably, God doesn't mean that way. We have so many excuses. If we want, if we want something that we want, we can come up with excuses to justify ourselves, haven't we? We justify ourselves. Uh, I remember this, this is a real story happened in Sam Samarang. This, uh, this handsome, uh, what, mid, midlife, midlife uh, uh, choir conductor, and, and he has practice like, like every Saturday, they have practice, choir practice, and uh, he has to, there is a one, uh, uh, one of the choir member, he has to take her home after the practice after the choir practice. And the bond becomes closer and closer, and then uh, finally they, ha they end up in an inappropriate relationship because he is married, he, he was married. So, and then when, when somebody confront him, and this, this, uh, this uh, secret, love, secret love affair uh, happens or uh, in a in, in few, few, few months or few years. And one day when somebody confronted him, he said that, oh, maybe God, uh, God probably allowed this. Because if not, why I came across this lady, this is a beautiful lady, and she is alone. So, so he, he will justify. And... Uh, so you will find excuses if you want to do it. You will find any excuses. And one day uh, he died, he passed away, and uh, we have so uh, an odd situation where that girl come to the funeral and also the family of the wife and the children. So they face each other. This is happening. This, this, this is uh, real and this is... So if we, if we know if we want to do something, even we rebel against God, God said this, and we said, oh, maybe not. God said this, but I say, maybe not. Because if not, why God allows that, that girl to come across my life? Is that an excuse? That's an excuse, right? That's an excuse. That's what, what we, ex we, we always say also, an excuse. So, the stronghold number two is pride. We, we, do, we do not honor God. We boast on our own ability. God must have approved this. He allowed me to cross paths with this girl. Brothers and sisters, it's very easy to find excuses to justify our deeds. Rebellion starts with challenging or questioning God. Did God really say that you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Start from the beginning. This is also a rebel, right? This is challenging God. God said you cannot eat from, you can eat from any other things, but only this tree, the, the tree from, um, you cannot eat. But then Satan will, 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 will talk to you and he will say, did God really say 
they will question, they will put a doubt first, and after that, questioning. So from questioning God, doubting the inerrancy of the scripture, God's scripture is without error, right? Who believes that everything that God uh, write, wrote here is without error? Who believes that? You don't believe that? Everybody believes that. But here, we start doubting of the in inerrancy of the scripture. Abraham also. That is very common. Don't take light of it. We will, we will be doing the same thing if we, if we don't learn from Adam, from, from Abraham. Abraham, uh, the Lord said to Abraham that from your seed, from, from this woman, from Sarah, you will have a child. They have been waiting 10 years, 15 years, 25 years, nothing. And uh, Sarah's womb becomes dry. And it's not, it's not any, any longer productive. So I, I need to help. Maybe God doesn't, didn't mean that. So this is challenging God. So from questioning God, doubt, doubting the inerrancy of Scripture, confidence that we know better than God, and rebel against His word. Now we have a confusing message. And one thing we said, we, have, we need to have confidence. But the other thing that we should not have overconfidence that we can do everything without God. So on one thing, you, you heard about those those two conflicting messages, right? We have to be confident. You can do it. You can do it. And that is the power of speech. Confidence. I can sing. I'm beautiful. I can write good poet. I can play piano very well. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. That's very good. Because if not, then, oh, uh, no. I have been predicted that I will not get married until 40 years until I'm 40 years. So you, you will not mingle. When, when time comes, uh, Pastor Simon tried to introduce someone to you and said, no, it's, I will not, uh, whatever I do, I will not get married until 40 years. Somebody told you like that. No. You have to have confidence. You have to be, ha I can do it. I, um, I have confidence. I have the positive attitude because it's prophesying your future, all that are good. I can do it. God is in control. God is in control. I believe that. I believe that. Even if Isaac was the promised, the promised child, but if God asked to kill him, to sacrifice him, I believe that God can raise him from the dead. That's, the, that's, the, that's trusting the Lord. But we need to have confidence because you will speak in the power of speech. That's your, your future. If you, if, you, if you speak, oh, I'm, I'm broke. I don't have money. I don't have uh, loved ones. Who cares about me? No one cares about me. Then you will, you will live a defeated life. But you need to have confidence. But on the other hand, we should not say, I can do it all my way with, without checking with God. Putting God on the sideline. So that is uh, the stronghold number two. The envy. Uh, and the, uh, not, not the, uh, the number two is uh, pride. When, when Moses was 120 years, the word of God said his physical strength is very, very, still very strong. And we, we also hear about the song, let's see. Let the weak say, I am strong. It's not, it's not a suggestion, but it's a proclamation. It's proclamation. It's telling. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. What you consistently say about yourself will set your destiny. That's prophesying your future. Stronghold number three. 
stronghold number three is lust. Matthew 18.9 said, Count out the eye that drags you. That is very, very... If you have a... Some problem with that. Uh, this uh, stronghold number three is lust. So, do not compromise. Do not compromise with sin. If you compromise, that's what happened with the Lot's daughter. He compromised with, with the environment. Sometimes it's very difficult because you, if, if you are in an environment like that, and you will be dragged into the environment, their lifestyle, the first, the first uh, male that was raped, probably there was uh, uh, the story of uh, lots of uh, girls, lot, lots of daughters raping their father. Where, where did they get, they get it from? From where? From Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Because they are, they are a, a good people. They are righteous people. But with the environment, so because they are they are, they are compromised, they compromise with the with the sin, they compromise with the environment, with lust. So this is the stronghold number three: destroy them. Do not compromise. Even the Lord said, "Couch out, and if your eye causes you to sin." Couch it out and throw it away. It's better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes to be thrown into the fire of hell. Do not be overconfident with your ability. You can control it. There is no... Ex- we, we stumble by small rocks, right? We never, if, if, you have, if you see a, like a huge rock, you probably will not stumble upon a huge rock, right? You will stumble upon small rocks, little rocks. Little rock. Peter is the little rock. Stumble by small rocks. It is so small, you ignore it, but you will stumble with small rocks. So, this is the stronghold that you have to be careful. And uh, when, when, when Saul was conquering uh, his enemies, Samuel said, Show no mercy. But the Agag case with Saul is also showing rebellion. I know better than God. I know better than God. God said like this, but I will do other things. Do not come, be comfortable with sin. It comes with a small rock. Later, if you read from the Deuteronomy, they said, do not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughters to their son or take their daughters to your daughters or they will turn your sons away from following, following me to serve other gods. That's what Solomon had, right? He has, what, 700 or 750 wives and how many concubines? Probably 1,500 total. And, and uh, that is the habit of that area. If you conquer a, a place, and the place that you conquer, they, they, will, they will send a gift. The gifts as the the gift the, the daughter of the king and then becomes the wives of Solomon, and they will bring a little bit of their idols, and Solomon tolerated that. Okay, that's 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 okay. Uh, I will use her probably once every three years, so it's probably okay with with uh, with their idols. But then the word of God said that will turn Solomon's heart. They will turn your sons away from following me to serve other God. The other thing is, do you know that you are a people holy to your God? You are a chosen people. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth. You are the treasured possession. 
sometimes we, we say, uh, we, we heard about this saying, others may, you can. Have you heard about that? Why I cannot do that? Why I cannot do that? Like the other, they can do uh, fun things. And whatever uh, Pastor Sami brought me here, is, everything is boring. Everything is boring here. Life in church, Saturday, Sunday, or all the days, is so boring. I want to live like the other. But they are not the chosen people. You are the chosen people. That's why there's a saying, others may, you can. Others may, you can. Do not complain why others can, but I can. Because you are a chosen one with different rules. You are a Nazarite set aside for God's purpose. You, you cannot enjoy like you cannot enjoy, quote unquote, like the other people. It's a struggle. And different people have different conviction. But I don't want to say what you can or what you can do. If you like, for instance, you like uh, to, to, to see or watch uh, horror movies or violent movies, I'll let you decide whether that's good or not for you. Is that your, your stronghold? that you have to face or not, it's up to you. Remember, you are a chosen one. If you think watching those movies will get you comfortable with sin, as the word of God says, gouge out the eyes that drags you to sin. After I watched certain movie, I realized that behind those movies, there was the philosophy behind that's not biblical, that is easily bringing you to Sodom and Gomorrah, so Sodom and Gomorrah, that brings all the God's value to world's value. You can decide for yourself whether you are doing this is a waste of time or sometimes lack of sleep. Who watches uh, Netflix at night? Sometimes I do. And that is sometimes a waste of time, right? And you have a lack of sleep in the morning, you cannot wake up because, because uh, the film uh, show for two hours, lack of sleep, watching useless show or doing useless activity. But I don't say that that's wrong, no. I don't want to say that. That's up to you. Whatever your conviction. So that is the stronghold. The next stronghold, stronger no number four, number five, number six, number seven, I want to leave to you whatever. I don't want to give you num num what is your stronghold number four that you have to face, number five, number six, number seven. It's up to you. It's, it's not an error. It's not a typo. This, this, is, this slide is not a typo. I uh, intentionally leave it blank because it's up to you to think. And um, one... And the next thing, I want to read from that the same chapter. The Lord your God will drive out those nations before you little by little. You will not be allowed to eliminate them all at once, or the wild animals will multiply around you. This is a strange message here, but it's the, the title of my message here. Why are we not allowed to eliminate it at all at once? That's interesting, right? Because on one thing, the Lord say, destroy them all. Don't take any, any, any um, uh, prisoner. Because the Lord said the wild animal will multiply. Actually, you're fo focusing on target and your enemy actually cleaning up the wild animals. The number two is the younger generation will be trained to hunt. The younger generation will be trained for war. You know, the biggest error that we... we we, we went to uh, Africa and then feed the lion, the, the wild lion or, or animals. And then they, will, they cannot hunt anymore. They lose their, their power to hunt. The biggest error is to feed the wild animals. That's why they, they, they have written, do not feed the animals. They depend fully on all the missionaries. They want to depend on the money from the, all the missionaries. They depend on U.S. fund. They want to depend on America's fund. In Indonesia, a lot of the ministry 
why this doesn't doesn't develop oh we cannot develop because we are we are waiting for the funds not coming so it's just like you you depend on the feeding so that's why the lord said you i will not allow all the enemies to be eliminated all at once Jude, judge 3 3 we read this these are the nations the lord left to test all the israel who had not experienced any of the wars in Canaan. He did this only to teach warfare. To teach what? To teach what? To teach warfare to the descendants of the Israel who had not previous battle experience. That's why the Lord will not allow you to eliminate all these seven nations all at once. They will be left there until now. Even until now, you see physically. He did this only to teach warfare to the descendants of the Israel who had not had any previous battle experience. The five rulers of the Philippines, the, the Philistine, all the Canaanites, the Sidonians, they were left to test the Israel to see whether they would obey the Lord's command. That is very important. That's why do not eliminate them all at once. That's God's word. Because we need to be trained all the time. If you eliminate it right now, then you will not be trained, and you will not. Then, then you you will think that oh, everything is has been conquered. So I can go to the mall. I can have uh, funds. Uh, I can have uh, a lot of funds. I don't have to minister anymore. Then you are tame. You are like the the lion that that will be fed every day. You are like the ministries that receiving U.S. funds. So in business, it's also true, right? The first generation struggled to start up, building the business kingdom. The second generation who had not previous battle experience will be on spending spree. They spend all the, the, the children of the, the, the tycoons in Jakarta. They destroyed the, the, their father's business kingdom because they have never been taught to fight. Okay, uh, I think I like I like to finish the the sermon. I want to end this sermon with an offer of God's greatest gift given to mankind that is salvation. If there is any one here or wherever this event can be watched, hasn't received Jesus as your savior, Romans ten nine. This word is near you. It is in your mouth and it's in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. I want to end this uh, asking you to sing together with me come into the presence of the Lord.